What's up, gang? This is Ken Zerk, Ken Zilligan, Zika Milligan, the Villa Villa Trilligan, and we are back on Tsukihime. I forgot whatever's left. My phone? Alright. Last episode, we killed that black beast thing. Uh, and then we parted ways with Ar Arukai. On top of that, we were saved and healed by somebody who looks like Seal. And they might be a part of the church or some some shit like that. I don't really know. Now let's get into it. Chapter five, no, day five. Fuck. Fifth day, October 25th. October 25th, red residue. I feel the morning sunlight. I keep my eyes closed as I try to fall asleep again. But the gentle sunlight keeps urging me to open my eyes. Slowly, I start to awaken. A quiet atmosphere. The air is comfortably cold and the sunlight is warm enough. I guess the weather will be great today. Then I should get up and go to school. That's right. I have to go to school. It's past the past three days my life was chaos and it made me forget I was a student. I wake up. I'm lying on my bed and my glasses are on my bedside. I automatically put them on and look around. The sunlight streams so strongly into the window, I almost expect to hear it pouring through. I take a quiet breath. I fill my lungs with fresh air and it feels like my chest is purified. I hear the clock ticking. Small birds chirp in the woods outside. I stand on my warm bed, aimlessly feeling the relaxed passage of time. This is, of course, another peaceful day. But I feel a bit unsatisfied. Although I'm back in this cold morning, I feel there's, some, there's something that seems out of place. Even though I killed that vampire with the black coat and everything is back the way it was, I'm feeling that something is missing. That's ridiculous. I shake my head and shake off that unimportant thought. And then, good morning, Shiki-sama. Whoa, 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 hold on, you scared me, don't do that. I jump up in my bed. Now that I look, Hisui is standing quietly at the side of my bed. Hey, Hisui! Please, excuse me, Shiki, but since you did not notice, I spoke. Uh, well, I mean, I I'm sorry, too. Hisui respectfully bows to me. She scared the fuck out of me, damn! My heart is still pounding rapidly. Uh-huh. But it's still before 7 o'clock, Hisui. Yes. It is a bit earlier than your usual waking time, Shiki. Well, yeah, then why are you here? I came to wake you up. Akiha wants to know where you have been. What are you? Akiha wants to know what, have you, what you have been doing these last two days, so she wanted me to bring you no matter what. Ah, I forgot. Come to think of it, I skipped school last Saturday and was with Arakad all through Sunday. What's more, I came back late last night, snuck in like a burglar, and then went to sleep. Don't tell me Aki is angry. I do not know. Please confirm for yourself. You setting me up! Hisui's voice sounds very cold. Hisui, you knew I came back? Yes. I noticed when you returned early this morning around two o'clock. We saw you on a security camera when you were climbing the gate. Does Akiha know this? No, only Nason and I know this. That's good. Shit. Anyway, I think I avoided the worst possible situation. However, it's still pretty bad. Not informing her what I've been doing these last two days and returning in the middle of the night. Yeah, that's pretty damn bad. All right, I'll head down immediately. Uh, and if possible, I'd be happy if you tried to calm her down as much as possible. Um, Aki already appears to be calm. I think it would be difficult for my words to calm her even more. One problem after another, I just got done with that fucking vampire bitch. So I never thought I would face another life and death battle without even a rest break. Well, time to get up. I can't do anything staying in bed. I'll go after I change, so please go ahead, Hisui. It's all right, I won't run. Well then, we'll be waiting for you. <sighs> well then, I should change quickly so Mistress Akiha may pass judgment on me. Oh, bullshit. I'm a grown ass, I'm a grown ass man. I'm a grown ass man. I don't got to report to your ugly ass. Fat forehead ass. 
All right, I'm here. Now only a door separates me from the sitting room where Akiho awaits. No matter what circumstance there was, there's no excuse for skipping school and not coming home for two days. Well, I think your circumstance was pretty damn, I, uh, uh, you know, understandable. Now, try to deceive her. Tell the truth. Don't tell the truth. She ain't gonna believe that shit. All this damn saving I'm doing. Just apologize. That's right. I think that's the best choice. I don't think Akiha would understand about non-humans like Arukai and the, the, the And since I can't tell the truth, I should at least sincerely apologize. All right, let's go. Taking a deep breath, I open the sitting room door. In the sitting room, Akiha is on the sofa and he's where you're standing by the wall. Good morning, Nissan. Her gaze is telling me, I am angry. Um, huh. Morning, Akiha. Let's dispense with greetings. Please sit there. I wish to speak with you. Her words are so forceful I can't say no. I solemnly and calmly sit down on the sofa across from her. Nissan, this is very abrupt, but may I ask about these past two days? Uh... Despite her polite language, Akiha's words are unmistakably a threat. But her Onichan cannot tell her such a story. About that, Akiha. Yes, what is it? I'm sorry, but I can't really tell you. Crash. The teacup that Akiha was holding falls to the table. Rather, I think she dropped it intentionally. Akiha-sama. Oh, I'm sorry, Hisui. Would you please clean it up? Uh, you asshole. Hisui silently cleans up the spilled tea and the shards of the very expensive looking teacup. I uneasily watch her do so while Akiha is glaring at me. Once done cleaning, Hisui goes to the kitchen. Then, Nisan? Yes. Could I ask you again? Akiha doesn't give up. I can feel her drive to get the story out of me no matter what. But still, I don't think I can tell her about it. Of course, not just for my sake, but hers as well. No. No matter how many times you ask me, I can't tell you. I feel sorry that I made you worry, but I can't tell you about it. Even though you are sorry, you can't tell me? That's right. I'm sorry I ever contacted you and not been able to talk about it. But I haven't done anything wrong the past two days. I don't even want to think about- I don't even want to think that was wrong to- that was the wrong thing to do. <clears throat> That's right. Even these past two days were simply kill or be killed. I want to believe it was the right thing to do. I did it to help Arukai. But most of all, I do not regret killing that cannibalistic monster. At the very least, there will be no more victims killed by having their blood drained. I'm sorry, Akiha. I'm sorry to worry you, but please don't ask me anymore. Akiha looks me in the eye. For a while, she stays like that. I understand. After thinking about it, you must have your reasons, so I won't press you on this anymore. I'm sorry. Thanks for understanding. I understand Then I would no longer ask about this. But please refrain from doing anything like this ever again. Nissan, you are the eldest son of the Tono family. Now, if you do not understand your position better, it will be very troubling. It's got nothing to do with this. Besides, you, you're the success of the Tano family, so it doesn't really matter what I do. If you're so worried about the future of the Tano family, you should go find a husband appropriate for the Tano family. For some reason, Akiha descends into silence with that stupid ass look on her face. <laughs> Ugh. What's wrong? You feeling all right? It's nothing. If you have enough time to worry about me, please pay more attention to yourself. You have, you have a chronic anemia to worry about. Huh. Well, it's true I frequently collapse from anemia. Anyway, please do not leave the mansion by yourself often. Even without that, the city is dangerous recently. Someone like you who meanders about in a daze is just asking to be attacked by that serial killer. Serial killer. Oh, those serial killings. Took care of that, bitch. Took care of that motherfucker. He ain't gonna be serial killing nobody. He ain't gonna be serial killing nobody. I got his ass. Those serial killings where nine victims have been found. Their bodies were all drained of blood, so they call it a modern day vampire, but. Oh, that's okay. Those incidents, they will never happen again. Huh? Seems the vampire isn't around anymore. That killer is caught already. Is that so? How do you know about that? 
Well, I just happened to see it, but for sure, such things will not happen. Yeah, at least there won't be any more people killed by Nugs. These past two days spent with Arakai. So many things happened, I really can't just... I really can't say just what is right and what is wrong. But the simple truth remains, I can say it was all for the best. Nissan? What happened? You suddenly seem very happy. Akio looks strangely in my face. It's nothing. I just feel like... Oh man, it's finally over. A smile unconsciously creeps over my lips as I answer. And then all of a sudden, my glasses rip off and I just fucking murder everybody in a minute. It's half past seven. Shiki, breakfast is ready. Koaku's cheerful voice rings out from the dining hall. I've been tasting metal in my mouth since yesterday, but I'm not bleeding. This is annoying. Well, I'll go eat breakfast. Isn't it almost time, Akiha? Don't mind me, go ahead. Yes, I know. Maybe it's because of our conversation, but Aki is in a good mood. Rising from my seat, I head to the dining room. I really don't have an appetite. How come? Well, having right rice with something blood red all over it would make anyone lose their appetite. I shake my head. It's certainly just an illusion, but... And Kohaku's cooking looks excellent as always. Getting a hold of myself, I take a bite of the breakfast. I instantly spit it out. Akia looks at me questioningly as I come out of the dining room. So soon after I went. Nissan, did you forget something? No, it's nothing. It, it, it's just something really trivial. Shiki doesn't have to seem to have an appetite this morning. He just throws anything he eats back up. So I got him to make take some medicine. Huh? She said medicine, but it's really just some vitamins. I had a bad dream last night. I should settle down in a bit so I eat at, so I eat at school. I didn't say this to Kohaku, but to Akiha's eyes telling me she wants to say something. So I'll head out soon. My head should clear once I start walking to school. Wait. Akiha's voice comes from behind me. I'm going. I'll be I'm going. I'll be back early today so you can scold me then. Ignoring Akiha's worried voice, I exit the mansion. Hisui walks with me to the gate, carrying my bag. Well, I'll be going. Thanks for seeing me off, Hisui. Hisui wordlessly hands me the bag. Shiki, around what time will you be returning? You don't trust me either? It's okay. I'll definitely be back in the afternoon. I understand. Then please be careful on your way. Hisui bows deeply. Feeling a bit embarrassed about it, I leave the mansion's gate. At the intersection, there are only the figures of my fellow high school students. No young woman sitting on the guardrail like that one time. Well, of course. I probably won't ever see her again. First of all, her goal was to execute the vampire. And with Nasville gone, there's no reason for her to stay around here any longer. Just a little bit in my chest. Things like regret and lingering affection. It's true she only brought trouble, but even still, it was fun being with her. I think there must be something wrong with me. Even though I was in such danger the whole time, there's still a part of me that unconsciously tries to remember her. It's almost like I'm in love with her. Even though I would never want to be exposed to that kind of danger again. Because I skipped breakfast, I arrive at the front gate 10 minutes before it closes. Everyone who doesn't have club activities before school arrives at this time. The only clubs that meet in the morning are the sports clubs. So naturally, the entrance get crowded with students. Ah, by the gate I see a familiar figure. Not even knowing what I plan on doing, I chase after her. Ah, uh, good morning, Tono. It's strange to meet you out here. Yeah, I saw you from behind, so I ran after you. There was something I wanted to ask. I sneak a look at her face. Yeah, what is it? She faces me with her usual, gentle smile. I... Man, ask her. I mean, she probably gonna look at me like I'm stupid, but ask her anyways. Like, you gotta be sure of these things. Hold on. Oh, 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 yeah, I'm in September now. You gotta be sure of these things. I gather up my courage and ask her about last night. Imagine she just fucking murders us. <laughs> She's like, mind your business, peasant. I gather up my courage and ask her about last night. 
Uh, senpai, last night, were you in the park? Thought I saw you wearing something like a black coat with your skirt flowing in the wind. What is that? Uh, well, yeah, the high lace boots suited you. I was kind of fascinated. You look really cool. Huh? Senpai tilts her head. She frowns like she doesn't understand my words completely and then denies it. I don't quite understand, but you're saying I was near your house two nights ago? Looking like that? Yeah. Senpai, that was you, right? No way. Tono, are you saying I look like I really have that much free time? Senpai's really angry. <laughs> she can't be playing ignorant or lying. No, that's not it, but I, I just I saw someone who looked like you in the park last night, so... Senpai gives a sigh. Tono, that wasn't me. I don't have that kind of hobby. Uh, yeah, I know. I just wanted to ask. Certainly, after having her say that, she's right. Jill Senpai and that person last night aren't related at all. In the first place, Senpai's just a normal person. And if she was actually there, she had to have seen me kill that vampire with my knife. If she saw such a gruesome scene, there'd be no way she could talk with me normally like this. Sorry, please forget about it. I guess it was just someone else. That's fine, but did that person really look like me? That weird person? Well, I'm not too sure. It was dark and far away, huh? Yeah, it was far and I couldn't make out her face. So why did I think it looked like Senpai? Maybe there was something wrong with me. I cross my arms and think. Ten, the 10 minute bell ring. Nigga, that was Senpai, bro. That was Shield. That was Shield Senpai, dog. The 10 minute bell rings. Uh-oh, we'll be late. Well, bye, Senpai. I'll see you later. Yes, I'll come see you during lunchtime. I fly into my classroom. Still five minutes before class, so it's very noisy inside. Woo! I take a breath and head to my seat. With this much time left, I didn't even need to run at all. Yo, Duke of Delinquency. From behind, I hear the voice I never look forward to. What's going on, Tono? I never heard you were skipping class. It's a lot of trouble. You have to tell me when you skip school and go play. Arahiko says those preposterous words with an unbelievably happy expression. Why should I tell you when I don't go to school? Isn't it obvious? When you don't show, neither does Senpai. So it's bad unless I think something ahead of time. What's bad for this guy? But seriously, what happened? Since middle school, you've had anemia, but you never skipped school. Well, you did a cool trick several times, leaving as soon as you arrived. It's kind of like that. I made it to the intersection and felt bad, so I went back home. Uh, both you and Yumizuka, both you and Yumizuka seem to be acting like bad students lately. Well, I'm guilty as charged, but is something wrong with Yumizuka? Her? She's been absent lately. She was always such an honest student, so I think she might have been stressed out. She got murdered! But I bet she can't call a race because she's got a bad hand. Arihiko's words are always very unique. While we were talking, the homeroom chime rings. Well, I'm off. Since you skipped Saturday, make sure to study hard today. Arihiko goes back to his seat. Fourth period ends and the class erupts into pandemonium all over again. The guys dash off to the cafeteria. Girls eat their lunches at their desks and a new Yarihiko carrying a sandwich and coming over to me. Yo, Tono! Lunch, lunch! What should I do? Since morning, I haven't really had an appetite. I don't feel hungry, so maybe I don't have to force myself to eat. If I eat, I might throw it up again and cause trouble. I should. Well, you gotta eat, dude. You gotta eat. Even still, I need to get some, at least some nutrition. I'm already prone to passing out as it is, and if I don't push myself to eat, I'll probably just pass out. Sorry, go ahead and eat. I gotta go buy food. Oh yeah, guess I'll start eating without you. I leave Arihiko happily unsealing his sandwich behind me as I exit to the classroom. Exit the classroom, not to the classroom. I buy some bread and milk and then go back. Arihiko and Shield Senpai are already over at my desk by the window. Oh, Tono. I'm joining you guys.
Uh, no, no. You don't have to mind much. We're pretty happy when you can join us. Isn't that right, Tono? Is Zarahiko that pleased just to be with Senpai? He happily asked me for agreement. Well, for once we do seem to be in agreement. That's right. You really helped me out by coming, Senpai. I don't know what I would have done if I had to eat while staring at this guy's face. Button up your shirt, you fucking degenerate pervert! Don't nobody want to see your chicken bird chest! You got no feathers on your shit! I answered lightheartedly and take my seat. Senpai is eating from a large lunchbox and Arihiko is long since finished with the sandwich. Alright. I take a bite from my bread. I still have no appetite, so I forcibly, I forcefully wash it down with some milk. Arihiko holds a lively conversation with Senpai since they're both done with lunch. They talk about the strange events with like serial murders and whatnot. Doesn't really help my appetite. Really? We haven't found all those missing people yet? It seems that way. There was even another news report this morning. Inoue, didn't you see the news this morning? Nah, I don't have time to do anything in the morning, so I didn't watch it. That's no good. Staying up late at night? You shouldn't walk around at night. There's some scary people out there. That's no problem. I'm a scary person myself. Well, you might be right. Inoue, you do look like a shady character. The two of them laugh. Shield Senpai might be serious, but Arahiko probably said that as a joke. Arahiko's eyes twitch as he smiles. Anyway, I can't exactly ignore their conversation. Senpai, you mentioned a new report. What, what is it? In the news this morning, a young man who went shopping last night about our age, a young woman who went shopping last night about our age and she went missing. Her house is close to the park, I heard. Yeah, he's about to lose all his appetite. He's about to throw up. Like, he's about to just... Bleh! He's about to... Like, bro. Oh, close to the park. As soon as I say that, the contents of my stomach threatened to rise up. Last night, that unknown girl who just by chance was by the park was destroyed by that irrational violence. Missing might be a better description since she was devoured without even so much of a hair left behind. That makes her the ninth victim? No, tenth? Damn, what an amazing pace, all in a single month. Yes, what I hear last night disappearance was a little different from all the other ones. The families of all the other girls who disappeared noticed it a short time later. By the way, you didn't watch the morning news either, Tono? Don't tell me you're not a morning person either. Huh. Wouldn't say I'm not a, no a morning person, but I'm not terrible in the morning either. Leaving that matter aside, I still won't be able to watch it for a while. At my house, there's no TV. Senpai and Arahiko stare br blankly. No TV? Your house is that big mansion, right? There's no way you don't have a TV in that mansion. I won't let you say you don't have one in your room, being a student and all. No, there really isn't one. My old man always said there was no need for such brainwashing machines. There's a small one in Kohaku's room, but I'm not about to barge into a girl's room in the morning. If I want to get to the news, I just have to rely on a newspaper. Tono, what do you mean by a girl? You can't just say that and get away with it, Tono. They're both glaring at me. <laughs> They're both jealous for different reasons, bro. That's crazy. No, no real friends. They're both jealous for different reasons. I slapped my hand over my mouth, but it's far too late. Ah, uh, simply put, just that there's a servant in my house named Kohaku. Huh, a servant? You're really lucky to have a girl around you at all times to take care of your every need. That's not it. There isn't anyone to take care of the mansion, so we have to hire people to do it. Whether she's male or female is entirely irrelevant. Oh, really? Oh, really? Hey, Inui. Doesn't Tono seem real intimate with this Kohaku? Yeah, yeah, he looks so happy when he said her name. I wanted to ask before, but just what kind of life does Tono lead right now? They trade glances, not a fucking good one, not after what happened. Uh, I choke on the bread I'm eating. Arihiko even seals Senpai with their cool glance interrogates me with a bizarre intensity. 
Tona, there's still plenty of time left. Please, tell us about your life at the mansion. She approaches me with a smile that won't seem to let me get away. Just thinking about it, just thinking about the 20 minutes or so I have left to live through this makes my head spin. I have to live. After class, the room quickly fills with the gloom of dusk. The sun is sinking below the horizon. There's no one else in the classroom. I'm the only one who likes sitting here and doing nothing. The room is painted red. I don't like watching the sunset. It makes me think of blood and reminds me of the events in the past few days. Still, I don't particularly feel like going back home. I stare blankly out the window. Red. Red sunset. Ah, uh, ow! The old wound on my chest hurts. The color red. Something red, such as human blood. Lots of blood, sticky with a strong smell. Ah, it hurts. My glasses are on, but my head hurts. Why? The throbbing pain. My head, why? My head, why? Throb, why? I start to pant heavily. My breathing is ragged. I'm horribly getting worked up. I'm irritated. There's something I can't stand and I can't calm down unless I take it out on something. Is it Tono? Huh? Senpai. Senpai has a very serious look on her face as she enters the room. I just heard a sound that sounds like someone knocking over desk. Was that you, Tono? Huh? I turn around. Indeed, desks are strewn about and chairs overturned everywhere. Ah, uh, yeah, it, it seems so. Guess I got a little irritated for no reason. Uh, did I really do this? Jeez, you can't do that. I don't know what happened, but you shouldn't take it out on things. You're right, I'll take it out on people. Senpai starts to straighten out the desk and the chairs. I wordlessly do so too. Sorry. I don't quite know myself. Huh? Tono, you're acting weird. You were spaced out in the rain that time, and today you, you're, you spaced out in the middle of all these jumbled desks. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm tired and it's making me act weird. I take a deep breath. Is it because I saw Senpai's face? The headache and the irritation I had before vanishes like it was never there. Sorry, I've caused you trouble again. I'll head out now, so see you tomorrow. Oh, Tono, are you going back now? Yeah, I'm not. As if nothing had happened before, she gives me a hearty smile. What a coincidence. I was just thinking that I should go back too. Since it happens to work out, can I go back with you? No, I appreciate the offer. I appreciate the offer, but isn't your house in the opposite direction? We can't exactly walk back together. I know, so we'll be together until the gate. Well, in that case, my pleasure. Yes, I have to get my thing, so please wait a minute. With light footsteps, Senpai runs out of the room. It really was only a minute until she came back. Oh yeah, because she says that she can go from her class to this class in, in under a minute. That's actually insane. Thanks for waiting. Now then, let's go. She really is cheerful. How should I say this? Just seeing her drives away all the clouded feelings I had earlier. Having such a great person ask, to come with, ask me to come with her. I ought to be punished if I was still gloomy. All right, let's go. But it's a pretty short trip to the front gate. Oh, that's right. We'll have to go as slow as possible to make it worth it. <sighs> She's so charming. Senpai starts to walk. Following her, I leave the, darkened cl the darkening classroom behind me. We walk out to the gate. From here, we have to go our separate ways. Well then, this is goodbye for now. We got here pretty quickly. I feel the same way. I was really thinking it would be better if the school was a bit bigger. Well then, senpai, see you tomorrow. Yeah, let's meet at school tomorrow. Smiling as she responds, senpai disappears in the opposite direction. After watching her go, I head down to the street toward my house. And then I see Arukai eating ass in my bushes. Sorry. I'm just trying to see if I can predict what's going to happen in the next few moments. You know, I'm trying to see if I can like have a call at the moment. 
I head up the road and draw near the mansion. After a little more walking, I see Hisui standing by herself at the front gate. What the fuck is she doing? Tilt a man to the side, I head for the front gate. Hisui realizes I'm here and bows her head. Welcome back, Shiki. Ah, uh, yeah, thanks, Hisui. I barely reply since I'm bewildered by the respectfulness of it all. Were you waiting for me to come home? Yes. Reading the master is a servant's duty. Answering very matter-of-factly, she doesn't even bat an eyelash. Um, Hisui, I'm truly happy you waited to greet me, but there's really no need to wait outside. I'll come back on my own so you can greet me whenever you realize I'm back. Hisui face clouds slightly. Oh, maybe. Maybe she was waiting for me to return like this on Saturday and Sunday. Hisui, um, I understand. Starting from the morrow, I will await your return in the lobby. Hisui gives a quick bow and opens the mansion gate. Hisui turns around as she does so. Uh, for some reason, the atmosphere isn't exactly conductive to the conversation. Hisui closes the gate after I pass through. Then she silently walks to the entrance to open the, open the door and leads me to the lobby. I get to my room. Aki isn't back yet from her lessons. Kohaku was preparing dinner and Hisu was cleaning the mansion. Jeez, there's nothing to do. But there's a mountain of studying, reviewing, and memorizing a student like me has to do. But I ain't doing all that shit. Suddenly, Arukai's face flashes in my mind. Whether good or bad, it's probably just a reaction to the two crazy days I had. Perhaps spacing out here in my room would be good, giving my mind and heart a break. And then she pulls up in my room and starts bouncing. Stop. Stop. I'm just saying dumb shit. After eating dinner by myself in the large dining room, Kohaku treats my wounds. And I go back to my room. Your wounds? Your wounds? What wounds? Didn't he... Didn't, didn't Seal or whoever that Seal look alike? Heal all of your wounds? Akio didn't make it back in time for dinner. Her lesson was apparently going to last a while, so she was going to eat away from home. It's past 10 at night now. It's a bit too early, but since I'm exhausted, I should sleep early tonight. My body is exhausted, but I can't fall into a deep sleep. The wounds all around my body sting and wake up my mind as it tries to sleep. I look at the clock as I lie in bed. It's past three o'clock in the morning. Already five hours of unsatisfactory rest. Yeah, but I can't sleep. Not being able to sleep when I want to, it's like torture. Tick, tick, tick. The sound of the clock second hand gets on my nerves. Tick, 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 creak. Tick, 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 tick. Huh? I think I heard something mixed in with the ticking. It sounded like the door opening, but who would be coming at this hour? Tap, tap, tap. No, there's no mistake. Someone came into the room and is coming near me. Who is it? If someone was to come this late, it would be... It's most likely Akiha, right? Wait, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to be honest, though. The what makes the most sense is Akiha. But... When I heard somebody coming in, my first thought was like, bro, did, did Arukai just break into my fucking crib? <laughs> so I'm going to go with Arukai. Hey, Shiki, wake up. I hear a voice by my ear. Last night, the voice I heard right until I, right before I slept, the voice I can't forget. It was? Hold on. I want to see something right quick. I'm about to check. Maybe like what I choose. Maybe it depends on what I choose. So if I say seal, seal up perhaps? That's dumb. It can never be senpai. It was! <laughs> so it depends on what I pick. Okay. That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. I just wanted to see. I'm going to stick with Arakat. Hey, Shiki, wake up. I hear a voice by my ear. Last night, the voice I heard right until right before I slept, the voice I can't forget. What the fuck was Shield doing in my crib? Hey, bro, next playthrough, we got to find out. 
What the fuck was she doing in my crib? Arokai makes sense. She's a vampire. She be you know she can break and enter. And then like you know with her personality, like she's just weird like that. Like I can like she just do shit like that. The fuck was Seal doing? <laughs> what like what is her issue? Why is she in my crib? Arukai? I sit up in the bed and look around the unit room. Good evening. I'm glad you seem well. Arukai greets me with smiling eyes. Uh, good evening? Why did you come here? Is it strange for me to be here? Strange? Of course it... Well, maybe not. Come to think of it, the night is her time, so I guess it isn't strange for her to be anywhere. Aren't you the one acting strange, Shiki? I came all the way to see you when you're just lying there. Oh, yeah, hold on. I get out of bed and stand up. Oh, shit! My body starts to tilt and I fall back on the bed. Huh? Something strange. Blood welds in the back of my head and my vision blurs. Something's wrong. Goodness, Shiki. Arakai draws closer. She stands before me in her red eyes. You can't do anything like that, right? Come on, stand up and touch me. I want to feel your fingers on my body. I can hear her voice right by my ear. What's going on with me? She's right in front of me, but I can't stare at her face. Something's wrong. Though I try to look at her face, my eyes won't move. Her well-shaped, soft-looking breasts. Her delicately curved, embraceable hips. Her luscious red lips. It all lets me feel her feminine nature, and as a man, I'm transfixed. Hey, I get dizzy. Something is weird. Hell nah! You being tricked, gang? That's not Arukai! That's a damn skinwalker! I can hardly breathe. My mind is blank. It feels as if my heart has stopped. I see. You can't move by yourself, huh? I can hear a voice by my ear. Casually, Arakai wraps both arms around me as I sit frozen on the bed. What? Thump. Even though my heart feels like it stopped, a beating resonates deep inside my chest. Your heart's pounding like it's gonna break, Shiki. Her voice pulls on my eardrums. No, in reality, her luscious lips are nibbling on my ear. Ah! <laughs> she's just nibbling on my ear. That's all she's doing. But a shockwave runs through me. Arukai. I try to move my arms to push her away. But I can't even lift a single finger. Ah! <laughs> I'm not scared. Bro, I'm not, <laughs> not skipping this shit. My body won't move. The instant I realize as my breathing quickens, I can't understand why my body won't move. Just the fact that my body won't move in this situation seems so indecent that it takes my reasoning and sets it on fire. Oh, I see. Shiki, you want me? Arukai giggles. This is so fucking abrupt. This can't be actually Arukai, bro. This gotta be like her fucking evil twin, Arkuade. <laughs> Even though that's the right way to say it. <laughs> the, the voice moves from my ear to the side of my neck. Her light breathing moves along my throat. With a small gasping rasps, rasping sound, she licks my neck. As if to taste me. Uh, <laughs> my heart is shattering. My pulsing blood in my blank mind. The coolness of Arkite's hands on my back. The soft pressure of her breast pressing against my chest. <laughs> her freezing tongue chasing the lines of my throat. All of it destroys what reason I have left. Don't be stupid. Why would I? I be turned on by you. Huh, liar. <laughs> I'm so immature! <laughs> You're so excited. Her breathing moves from my neck and travels down my chest. My breathing is heavy. I want to get away. But more than that, I want to take her. Golden hair, red eyes, white skin, slender fingers, soft arms. What a lustful body. My mind is screaming that I want to taste her from the top of her head all the way down to her toes. Real shit, don't leave the toes out. Ugh. What is this? I can still think rationally, but my mind is being ass is assailed by animalistic excitement. Ugh. Oh, my cock is hard! 
I put all my concentration on lifting my arm, but it doesn't move. My body is reacting to it breathing and I can't move it. I can't believe this shit. More than being bound by something I can see. Just the fact that her breathing is binding me gets me so excited. It practically makes me cum. Stop. If you keep doing this, it'll be bad. That's funny, Shiki. Your body doesn't agree with what your lips are saying. You've gotten so stiff down there. We better do something about it. <laughs> her hands move away from my back. And then her lovely white fingers just sit below my waist. Finding my already erect shaft. <laughs> Stop. You're in pain, right? It's okay. You don't have to hold back. I'll calm it down. Her breath hits my hard shaft. Her slender fingers wrap themselves around me. Go! Just, just that cuts my body to jump. My back arches and I fall back on the bed. Idiot! What are you thinking? I manage to shout as I lie on my back. Arakai looks up down on me without saying anything. And then she quietly removes the last of her clothes, staring at me with her unfocused red eyes and saw a soft, Shiki, you look delicious, escapes her lips. I strain with all my might to rise from the bed, but I still can't move a finger. She climbs onto the bed and her lush, naked body slowly eases down to press against mine. Thump! My blood stirs harder! Just like when I get dizzy, I can't think clearly. But this time I don't lose consciousness. Whoa! Hold on! <laughs> oh my god, I can't with this shit. <laughs> Amazing! I didn't think you could get this hard. Her fingers teasingly caresses me. It's more like touching than gripping. Until the sensation strengthens, urging me to hurry. Hurry, hurry! Can you feel it? You're dripping so much down here, Shiki. It's almost like you're crying. How cute, she says, smile. Her lips move down to plant a warm, soft kiss directly on the head. I frantically hold back the cry, threatening to escape my lips. Arakai looks up at me, her eyes dancing with unbridled glee. Can't you just be honest? If you're gonna be like this, Shiki, I have to tease you a little more. What? What are you- I stifle my voice once again. Just a touch of her fingertips overloads my senses. Then a wet sensation of her tongue sliding along my length as if to drench my part shaft the line of- The fuck? What the fuck was that? As if to drench my part shaft the line of saliva runs from her mouth. Her golden hair sways, partially concealing her face. All I feel is guilt and hesitation and the pleasure which starts to eclipse it. <laughs> I start to soar even higher. My grotesque shaft has hardened in an offensive glistening pillar. Her white fingers grip it, embrace it, gliding noisily up and down, driving me crazy. <sighs> Your voice is very hot. I was always thinking that this part of you looked delicious. With that, she pulls her mouth away. Her white fingers, such beautiful works of art, crawl up my shaft. <laughs> she compresses it from below as it trying to squeeze the life out of me. She moves her fingers, something rockets up from the base of my body. All I can do is frantically resist this feeling. While her four slender fingers move up my heart and it's like separate, like separate living things, her thumb forcibly rubs my tip back and forth, up and down, over and over. Amazing. Dripping this much and more coming? You really are excited, aren't you, Shiki? Itty! Oh, of course not! Hey now, I'm doing what you want. You should just be honest. Oh! Her thumb spreads open the opening on the top of my shaft. Oh no! From the lower half of my body, pain and pleasure mix together like an electric shock. Ah, 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 oh, ah. I can only breathe in fragments. Squish. My heartbeat, heartbeat, my breathing. <laughs> Everything has fallen into perfect synchronization with the movement of her slender fingers. I guess you're almost ready. Releasing my swollen organ, she looks up in my face. How was it? It felt good, didn't it, Shiki? I can't say shit. 
My mind screams in denial, but my body has succumbed to Arukai's voice. My mind is still my own, but my body is waiting for Arukai to continue. Arukai, that's enough! With the last of my will, I somehow managed to form those words. Arukai simply chuckles. Now, Shiki, I think I'll get serious. Her white fingers grab my base. My lockdown member swells as if trying to get away from her tight grip. I'm almost exploding. From the side as if playing a flute. Arakai takes me into her mouth. This is so bullshit. Because like we ain't go on a single date. You ain't take you ain't take me to dinner. We ain't shared a kiss. We haven't held hands. We ain't did none of that shit. And you over here sucking my dick. Oh my goodness. Some bullshit. I'm a rom I'm a ro I'm a I'm a romantic, bro. Like I want dinner before I want head, bro. Whoa! My spine feels like it could break in half at any moment. Arakai's tongue plays along what is now the most sensitive part of my body. This naked feeling, this attacking sensation of pure pleasure consumes me. This just makes my mind feel like it'll fly away, but her tongue does not stop. Her lips wrapping around me glide higher and higher, engulfing my tip. She drinks it in like the fluid oozing from the end. This sensation, I can't believe how good the inside of her mouth feels. A lukewarm feeling. The slippery texture of saliva. Inside her narrow mouth, my twitching manhood and the movement of Arakai's tongue is trying to hold me down. Ah! Shiki is so cute. Saying that her fingers once again move lower. Pushing against where my rod sprouts from my body. Only her tongue moves up and down, licking from bottom to top. Hun. Her hot, flushed breathing. The soft flesh of her tongue pushes strongly along my entire leg. <laughs> her breathing flows into my nerves like liquid pleasure. This wet, sticky movement of her tongue. The mingling of her soft, forceful tongue licking my heart and shaft. <laughs> Heavy breathing. As her halting breath puff against my heart, this another sensation rises up within me. Ar Arukai! I desperately swallow my words. I know if I speak out, my mind will collude completely to this pleasure. I know this, but... Shiki, this is so hot. <laughs> Her white teeth press down on my naked rod, and I don't care any about anything anymore. <laughs> Warm saliva seeps from the corners of her mouth. Just thinking from that, somewhere deep inside of me, a ball of heat starts to rise up. <laughs> I desperately try to hold it back here I can't do it here ever if I did I would probably to Arukai slosh slide the fluids of her mouth and my own mix together noisily dirty wrong primitive lust <laughs> I bite my tongue to hold back but it's useless her fingers grab me tightly not the gentle, mild touch of a playful lover like before. She just slides it quickly up and down, forcing me to the edge. I'm past my limit. Ah! Uh, thump. Burning heat travels through my shaft. Thump. It bursts forth into her mouth. Ah! This irresistible pleasure travels to my brain, battering my mind into submission. Arukai's caresses cease. She takes everything I offer and gulps it down without hesitation. Ah. Her pure white porcelain throat moves up and down as she swallows. Her beautiful lips pull away from my grotesque member. Between the two, a thin line of saliva hangs like an obscene spider silk. She wears an almost dazed expression. Her golden hair shimmers as a blush creeps up her cheeks and she looks up into my eyes. Ah. Anything resembling reason or restraint is long gone from my mind. My body is already able to move. Breathing wildly like an animal, I push Arokai down onto the bed. Who 
said Nasu's sex scenes were trash? Who said they were poorly written? That was the best. That was the best writing I've ever read. That was the best thing I've ever read in my life. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I gotta figure out how to fuck up and make this damn thumbnail. How the fuck am I gonna make this thumbnail, bro? The only pictures I've got is our guy sucking dick. <laughs> bro, look, man. Peace out. I love y'all. Tap into the next one, bro. Oh my goodness. This one. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I hope y'all enjoy. <laughs>